Well, welcome everyone. This is Kim Evans and welcome to Inspired Conversations. We are so happy podcast viewers and listeners for you to be a part of this digital marketing show that we have today. And I have a very special guest. My guest today is Eric Soropian. Uh, and Eric has his own, he owns his own digital marketing agency. Eric, thank you very much for joining Inspired Conversations. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Kim. So what I always love to do is just really, really quickly, if it's okay, Eric, I just always love to start with a very brief prayer to invite God in. Is that okay? Of course. Okay, great. Podcast, podcast viewers and listener, listeners, here we go. God, we just want to just give you a praise today, and we want to say thank you. Thank you. And we're inviting you into this podcast, and we want you to navigate your spirit. Let your spirit navigate this podcast and speak to the viewers as far as the north, as far as the south, as far as the west, as far as the east. Anyone that is listening to this podcast show, be inspired, transformed, and illuminated. Thank you. Eric. God, please continue to bless his company and thank him for his voice today and sharing his information. And God, thank you for blessing me because without you, I am nothing. Thank you, God. Eric, thank you so much. Oh my God, let's get started. <laughs> Share a little bit about, let me see here. We did have a bio here. Should I actually read your bio? Would you like, or just get right on in and share what you do? Well, I'll jump right into it. Okay. Uh, I own a digital marketing agency. It's called This Is My South Bay. Okay. Uh, the South Bay is a part of Los Angeles. It has probably about a million people in the community there. It's, it's, uh, it's the southern part of the bay. The other side is Malibu, Santa Monica, and, and those uh, fancy places across the bay there. And so uh, what we do is we do uh, digital marketing. It's search engine optimization centric, short for SEO. So everything that we do is we're, we're looking to get that traffic coming in from Google. So Eric, let me ask you, let's just step back just one quick second, because we have a lot of, a lot of business owners. Um, and we also have people that are starting their businesses, people who are expanding their businesses, right? Tell us what exactly in a simplistic form, what is SEO optimization? What is that? Of course. So you have search engines like Google, Yahoo, Bing, which are the top three in the States. And the big one is uh, obviously Google. Mm -hmm. So uh, when we go to google.com and we search for uh, whatever it may be, a mechanic, uh, 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 a, a product, a restaurant, uh, what you have is you have the listings that come up, the search results. The top and bottom of the page usually are paid advertisers. Mm -hmm. And then after that, in the middle are uh, websites that Google thinks is a good match between what you're searching for and the website that offers uh, what you're looking for. And so those are organic. Those are free. Okay. Google is not making money off of that. Okay. So usually those are really good matches because it's almost like Google is giving their stamp of approval okay. for, the, for, for the websites that are ranked there. So on every page you have... Uh, 10, 10 search results that come up. Okay. And then at the bottom and bo uh, top of each page, you have several, but the, you know, you have on each page, you have 10 organic that are coming up and those are, everyone's fighting for that real estate. Everybody would love to have that free traffic coming in from Google. It's a game changer for small and mid-sized businesses to get that traffic. Wow. So why as a business owner, a small business owner, corporations are something different. Um, it's a whole totally different ball game. They have people that do that 24 seven, but as a small business owner, which I'm assuming that is the audience that you serve, why is it so important for someone to have high SEO optimization? Uh, there are a lot of businesses that, uh, whether they know it or not, they, they, they depend on, uh, traffic coming from uh, their website okay. and business coming from their website. Wow. So the days of, you know, newspapers and magazines, I'm not going to say have gone away, right. but a lot of the spend, a lot of the dollars have moved to online. And so we're always on our cell phones. We're always on the computer and we're, you know, researching things actively to, to, uh, to shop or to get informed. And so uh, most businesses, if they want to stay in front of their existing clients 
-hmm. or if they want to create new uh, clients, uh, they have to spend some time and effort on their digital marketing campaign. And their digital marketing campaign could be paid ads on Facebook or Google ads or uh, YouTube or, you know, whatever the case may be. Uh, but they need to spend some time and attention to, to be able to uh, establish the, themselves online. So I do know that uh, Facebook have this thing called Pixel. And mm -hmm. Pixels are important because it's somewhat kind of like crawlers, I guess. And it implants on your website. And it, every time someone is coming to your site, it's drawing an impression or whatnot. Can you speak a little bit about uh, Pixels and how that relates to SEO optimization? Well, for example, I have uh, uh, some campaigns that I run where I just focus on the conversions that I get my client. Okay. So they're, they're like, I don't want to spend any money uh, for con consulting. I don't want to spend money for uh, writing or creating content. I'll just pay you for the conversions. Uh -huh. So conversion can be a phone call. Okay. It could be a form fill. Okay. It could be that somebody uh, types something in the chat box of my client, whatever, whatever we decide the conversion is. Okay. And so that way, we, what we do is we set up, for example, with uh, call tracking software, Okay. We set up on the back end of the website, uh, uh, we, we set it up so that when a phone call comes in from one of the campaigns that I am administering, yes. I get the credit for that. Okay. So that, that way we know today we got three phone calls from Facebook, four from Google, one from Yelp, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And so we can, we can see exactly where the uh, conversions are coming in from. So that way a lot of businesses, they're kind of flying blind when they don't have the uh, analytics. Mm -hmm. And so what, what you can do is when you see that you're getting, let's say, uh, I, I have one client right now, we're getting about $150 per conversion um, on Facebook. And then we're getting about $20 per conversion with SEO. Okay. And so we know that we can move the money around and we can, you know, I, I would never cut out a, a platform like Facebook. Yes. But I would lower the, you know, the, the budget and move the money around as it goes. And it could be a seasonal thing. It could be something that is there for, because digital marketing is a moving target. It's always, it it's always moving around. Always and moving, so, always changing. Fluid yeah. 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 So we have to keep track of everything, see where the phone calls are coming in from, where the form, form fills are coming in from, and then where the, ultimately the conversions, the new clients are coming in from. Wow. So I, I'm glad you mentioned Facebook. So if someone was on Facebook and I noticed there are a lot of sponsored ads and then I noticed there are organic ads. So which ads are better, the sponsored ads or the organic ads? Well, um, I, I, I would focus more uh, this conversation on uh, Google and uh, not as much social media. Right. But I would say if I use comparisons, um, you, you need to do a little bit of both. You need to do some paid ads, whether it's Facebook or Google. Um, and usually it's been my experience that when you get that traffic that comes in from organic Google or organic Yahoo, it has a higher conversion rate. Right. Okay. So because they are uh, like literally Google is saying, hey, do business together. You, you have what they want or they're, they're searching for. Whereas with the paid ads, we're, we're kind of spending money and it's not as, uh, uh, it's not as laser focused. Got it's it. there, but not as much with the seal of approval from, from Google. Got so it. That's, been my, that's been my experience. But I never stay away from spending some money on the, the, the platforms that I'm looking to get that free traffic from. So the reason why I asked the Facebook, because for some reason, a lot of people think that websites have fallen by the website by the wayside and that they don't need to focus their marketing efforts there. And, and I, I, on contrary, I totally disbelieve that. I think your, your, your greatest uh, claim to fame is having a website or a landing page. So I got to go back and speak to the Facebook because people might be running a targeted ad or just say they're not running an ad. Say a lot of people are on Facebook and they're like, then their website is connected from Facebook, like for instance, mine. So if I'm, it's my, okay, let's take me for example, it's Mother's Day, weekend is coming up. And if I'm saying something or speaking to a message on uh, Facebook, I'm going to drive them back to my website, right? I, I'm going to drive you back a URL to the website so you can buy a gift card. So we could take me as an elementary example. That's why I said Facebook, because some people will start with Facebook, but they're ending up on their website. So mm -hmm. someone working with you, 
then how would your company optimize that? If they're, they're coming from that or they might be coming from Instagram. And then now, how then can you, uh, does your company w- will help that website to be optimized? Well, the traffic that's coming in from uh, your social media, okay. I'm assuming that they're, they're your followers. Okay. So they already know of you. Nice. So, okay. Okay. so generally, the, uh, uh, that's the case. Instagram, you can put hashtags and you can kind of uh, uh, do some things to get some people that don't follow you to, to be aware of you. Now, the big difference, in my opinion, between the social media platforms and search engines is that when I'm on Facebook, uh, I'm not going on Facebook to find a restaurant or if my car just broke down, I'm not looking on Facebook for, uh, for that. Yeah. With search engines, something happens, m- my dishwasher broke or, you know, uh, like I said, my car broke down or something or any oil change, yeah. I'm there searching for it's in the oh, name it's it. search okay. engine. like you're searching right now and got it's immediate you're towards the end of the funnel of okay. what, uh, what you need to do got as far it. as social media got you're it. kind of in front of people so that when they're ready got you're it. there got it got so it. it's, a, it's a little bit of branding and a got little it. bit of uh marketing with social media and <laughs> with search engines it's kind of like hey i need a lawyer right now let me type uh, you know, personal injury lawyer and exactly. in my city or and accident then, lawyer or, exactly. you know, exactly. you, you hurt your back or whatnot. So it's kind of sort of, like you said, the yellow pages days are gone, you know, mm-hmm. and it's like, we're on search engines. They can, let me get on here and let me, and let me type in what I'm looking for. Google analytics will put in maybe within 50 miles or 25 miles from where you are, on mm-hmm. um, what you're looking for. Bam. That's how it comes up and then the information. And then now you appear in the search engines. Okay, I got it. I see ding, 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 lights. This is a break. <laughs> I see it. But I had to go there because I of know course. what we're going to ask. Of course. Because like we with see the differentiation between the two. Absolutely. They both have their places. Yes. And, you know, there's many ways to market online. You have to pick and choose which one works yes. for your business. Every business is a little bit different. Yes. I use social media for, uh, you know, obviously uh, uh, generating leads for cl- my clients. Yes. And generating awareness. But another way that I use it, because everything that we do in our agency is SEO centric. So we're just thinking of SEO and how we can get that traffic, free traffic from Google. So when we're thinking of social media, we're looking, Google looks at your social media as one of the many metrics to see if they want to rank you. So let's say today I have, I'm just going to use round numbers. Let's say we have 100 followers on our social media. And then last month we had 110 and next month we have 90. So it's going to show Google a trend that things are going down. We're not going forward. We're kind of moving backwards. We haven't posted in six months or we post and nobody uh, likes our post. Nobody comments, shares, et cetera. And so these are things that Google is looking at. So if you had a, 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 a channel that has a hundred followers and then next month has 105, the following month has 112 and, and your engagement rate is two, three, four, five percent and it's moving forward, then it's going to think, okay, they're talking about the subject. People are reacting to the subject. Mm. And so let me rank them for these keywords that they have on their website because people are obviously reacting to it. And so along with that, you're not getting any inappropriate uh, spam uh, notifications you, you know, you're not having people complaining about, about you online, uh, uh, on social media. And slowly it's looking at your Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest, whatever, face, uh, and, and kind of getting an idea. It's playing det- kind of like detective. Yeah. Let me look at your social media. Let me look at your reputation management. You know, let me look at your Google reviews, your Facebook reviews, your Yelp reviews. Let me see what people are talking about you on your own uh, pages, on other pages. And so it's kind of putting together a hunch and thinking, okay, these, this company has their act together. They're going in the right direction. I'm going to put my reputation on the line and rank them. And so let me move slowly, but let me give them some ranking here on some of these keywords, see what happens, and then kind of go from there. I love it. That, see, that makes it very, very clear. So now, Eric... How can you help a small business owner or how can you help someone streamline the learning curve and get started working with you? Sure. I have, I have a couple of programs. I think there there's, it's, I run into two types of of, uh, uh, potential clients. 
There's the one that uh, uh, they have some more time. They're interested in the subject. They're, they're kind of like a do-it-yourselfer. Okay. And they want to be, they want to learn it, grow the business, and eventually maybe uh, hire people and, and kind of go from there. So I have a program that I do where I uh, mentor uh, companies. Okay. So we have, uh, I have clients that we meet half an hour a week. We set up a time. Okay. We jump on a Zoom call like this, and then we uh, screen share. We go over reports. I have all the uh, tools that we can use to, to draw uh, comparisons with themselves to their competitors. I can run reports on them, their competitors, et cetera. Nice. And so... I give homework, I give things to do, okay. and then and then we go. Uh, sometimes they run into roadblocks. I had somebody just yesterday, I was working with them. Uh, they're having difficulty fighting a writer to do some blog posts. And I'm like, okay, I have a writer. Uh, and, and I just kind of, I have a lot of people in my network. So I, I uh, bring them together so that we're not getting stuck. Because yeah. what happens a lot of times is people just get stuck. Yes. They, they, they run into something and then they don't know what to do and then they get frustrated and they have a business to run and they have a family, they have uh, a social life, they have, they have a life. And this kind of falls kind of uh, in the background. The thing that you have to consider is that SEO, kind of like life, mm-hmm. it rewards consistency. Okay. And okay. so if you, yes. if you work on it for three months or a month, and don't work on it for six months, or you give up at some point, you it, all, that, all that effort is gone for waste. Because there's a lot of people that are consistently wow. feeding Google what Google needs. And so even if it's a blog post a month, you got to do it. If it's one a week, you know, whatever your, uh, your business is. And that's things that we talk about when I mentor my clients is, okay. hey, let's take a look at your competitors, see what they're doing. Because it, it could be that they're blogging, you know, every other day. Are you prepared to do that? Right. Exactly. You know, and, yeah. and so on. So, and so the, the second thing that I, that I do is I actually do the entire work. work. I have my agency here. Yes. yes. So we do the content creation. We do, uh, you know, getting it on all the different platforms, anything from Google My Business to blogging to YouTube to Facebook to everything. And so we do the whole nine yards, depending on the budget of the client. Uh, we set up a monthly meeting. We go over what we've done, how it's worked out. We look at all the data, okay. and then uh, then we strategize for the following month. Sounds very analytical, but it is greatly needed. It is greatly needed. Well, the the thing with SEO is it's part math and part art. Yes. So you you have to create content that is interesting for people to consume. I love one of the said. one of the and big. I- uh, thank you. One of the big metrics that Google looks at is when it goes on your, it's reading your Google Analytics all the time. Yeah. And for those of your audience that don't know, Google Analytics is, is a free tool that you can plug in on the back end of your website. Yes. And it'll keep track of uh, where the visitor came to your website from, uh-huh. how long they stayed, geographically, are they from United States or which state in uh, uh, United States, or are they from Canada, or are they coming in? Uh, by age group, by male or female, by pretty much, you know, what kind of browser they're using to what kind of cell phone they're using to everything. And so that way you can keep track of, um, you know, your, how your audience look, looks, you can kind of give them a, like you, you can give your target market a, a, a face. And so, yeah, so uh, it's, it's all interesting stuff. It is. So, and it sounds like a lot. So it sounds like if you didn't have that much time to do it, you would pay somebody to do it. But then you have to understand the report. Yes. You have to understand the facts because then how can you grow forward or determine where to spend your money if you cannot understand what's in the report? So I'm assuming that you do go over that as well. We go over everything line by line, you know, without getting lost in all the numbers, you know, we want to see trends. And, you know, SEO is something that sometimes it goes up, sometimes down, but you should be sailing in the right direction. Sometimes the wind blows this way, that way, but you are going in a particular direction because there's so much competition to get that traffic from Google. Again, this is traffic for people that are searching now yes, that's for what, you, what they need right now. It's, it's exactly. a need that they need to fill right now. Well, I think um, it would be great for people coming out of COVID for um, probably um, – safe environments where they can go, restaurants, 
uh, mm -hmm. personal services, of course. Um, I could kind of see how it's important right now to have your search engine optimized for your website because people are searching right now for particular types, specific businesses. Uh, so last two questions I want to ask, do you also offer a website audit? So if someone comes on, will you be able to currently look at someone's website and then help them to make a decision of maybe which way they should start to Absolutely. optimize their website? current Absolutely. website design. So what we what we want to make sure when we're dealing with Google is yes. that the the website is the user experience is, is a good one. Yes. So it's frustrating sometimes you go to a website and it takes 10 seconds to load instead of 2 seconds. Yes. You know, so Google's not going to rank that website. It could be a phenomenal website. It could have the product that's the least expensive, the best people work in there. It's wow. just not going to rank it because we're, you know, to sit there and wait for each page to load 10 seconds, we're just going to lose interest. I love it. And so that is not a good user experience for, yeah. for us, yeah. which means that Google is not going to rank us because if we go to, let's say we search for a restaurant, we go to the first uh, listing and it takes 10 seconds to load. So we go back to Facebook, we go to the next listing website and it takes 15 seconds or 10 seconds again. Third, it says at some point we're going to say, what is it with Google that they're, we're not going to blame the websites. We're going to blame Google. Exactly. And so Google wants to make sure that, you know, that, that the pay, that, that you can navigate. If you're looking, if you go, we'll stay with the restaurant example, exactly. you land on the website, it loads quickly. You want to know happy hour or you want to know the dishes or you want to reserve. Mm -hmm. It should be easy to find. If you find it difficult to navigate, you just move on to the next website. Yeah, our, exactly. our attention span is so short. Yeah. Exactly. So these are things that Google is watching. That's why when you when you look at your Google Analytics, Google is watching that to see time on site. If someone is there for, if your average visitor is there for three seconds on your website, that's not good. There's something called a bounce rate where they land on your website and then they bounce and they go without checking anything else and they go. If your bounce rate is 90%, 100%, that's not good. And so what happens is Google says, okay, I ranked this website for this keyword. They got a ton of traffic coming from Google to their website. Nobody stayed on the site for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to rank it. I'm going to lower the ranking or I'm not going to rank these new keywords for them and, and so on. So you want to make sure that you put forward a website that is uh, easy to navigate. It's a good user experience and that you're, you're optimizing for the correct keywords I so that people, it. people stay on the site. So Eric, I'm assuming when you first start with someone, you know how you know where they are in ranking in Google. I mean, I'm sh I'm sure that you can look that up, or a person can look their look th look themselves up to see how they rank, and then that's your barometer of where they are, and you can help them to go up higher. What I do is I have a couple of I have a bunch of tools that I use. One of them is called SEM Rush. Okay. Uh, it's it's about ninety nine dollars a month starting, and then they have other versions of it that are, that are more expensive. So what it does, and I have, uh, I have Ahrefs and, and many others, but I'll just talk about SEM Rush. What it does is we put in, let's say, for example, my client, I put in their uh, website. We see where they're ranked, ah. what keywords they're ranked for, roughly how much traffic that keyword is getting, yes. et cetera. And yeah. so then what we do is we say, okay, let's look at some of your competitors. Let's see what they're ranked for, okay. as opposed to taking pencil to paper and mm -hmm. looking at the ceiling and thinking of keywords. Mm -hmm. Let's look at our competitors, oh, our no. direct competitors, yeah. and let's see what they're ranked for. And let's see if those apply to you. Gotcha. So it could be that their competitor has 300 keywords that are ranked, and maybe they want to target 50 of them. They don't want to target all exactly. 300. It's not every business is a little bit different. Exactly. And so that way we can look at what I do is I do in the beginning, I do a competitor analysis. Okay. We look at the competitors okay. and then we, we do a keyword analysis. Okay. And so we in the beginning, what we're trying to do is we're trying to get, we're, we're locking in on keywords that have a higher search volume yes. and a lower competition. And so we have the tools to be able to guide our clients to say, Hey, if I were you this month, let's focus on these five keywords. Let's, let's uh, get the momentum going next month. We can keep those five going and add another 10 and kind of go from there. The thing that you have to keep in mind is Google is in business and they're doing great. They're not waiting for any of us to spin up a site and they're going to rank us right away. 
So we have to fight for those keywords. We have to fight for that real estate. Wow. Thank you for explaining that. <laughs> How long should someone work with you, Eric? If we, you know, it sounds like, like you said, it's fluid and dynamic and it's something that you have to spend time and you have to be consistent. What is an idea of consistency of really focusing on SEO optimization? I think, uh, Th that's a good question. It's difficult. Every industry is a little bit different okay. and every, uh, you know, if it's a local business, it's, you know, every competition in di different areas are different. Okay. But I think that you should start to see some things within the first three months. Okay. okay. And then it could take up to nine months to really get things sticky. Okay. So, but when you're in, you're in, then you just have to maintain okay. and then, and then, you know, just kind of keep, keep that, uh, that real estate that you have, and then you can add more keywords as you go. In other words, AKA budgeted in, and it's a part of the advertising marketing budget. And yes. if you're a small business, that's what you need to stay on top to draw in more people and users and clients and customers. That is something that needs to be a part of your marketing wellness plan. <laughs> agreed. Agreed. And you can, if you can keep track, because some people, sm small businesses are, uh, small uh, entrepreneurs, they are not versed in uh, uh, keeping budgeting, doing your ROI report or anything like that. Yes. So if you can do that, you can see that SEO over the long term, you're going to have the best return on investment. Best. And along with SEO, what we do is we talk about, uh, you know, it's 10 times more expensive to make a client, to, to make a sale for, to, to, to a new client than it is to make a sale to an existing client. Absolutely. So what a lot of businesses do is they focus on, let me just make more leads. Let me make more sales. Let me, and then they forget about this, this gold mine that they have of existing uh, uh, clients that they've worked with. And so we kind of coach uh, and, and work with that where we have a, like a good uh, email campaign, uh, you know, monthly email blast, a newsletter, a, a, a video where it, our client reaches out to their yes. uh, clients and, and says, Hey, you know, it's a happy Memorial day, or, uh, you know, we have this, this going on, or, uh, you know, if it's a lawyer, you know, this new law passed, I just want to make you aware of it. Taxes are coming up and, and things like that. So there's ways to stay in front of your audience as opposed to just constantly hunting for new business. I, and I, a lot of the times when you do that, you, you uh, keep the clients that you have and you get a ton of referrals. Absolutely. And that's the game, getting referrals. That's what we want. Exactly. Right. And it's kind of <laughs> sort of how we got connected, you know, on our website, Eric found me on my website. And so I am clearly understanding the power of having your website search engine optimized. After 25 years now being in business, that should have been the first thing that I focused on. But now I'm focusing on that because now I'm focusing on long term growth. So, Eric, I am so excited. Tell us about this book now. How can someone book a session with you now and where do they go? Well, they could go to my website. It's thisismysouthbay.com okay. and go on the homepage. There is a book now button. Okay. Click on it. Uh, pick a time and a day that uh, you can set aside 15 minutes okay. and we will go over anything that you want to talk about for SEO. If you want to talk about your competitors, you want to talk about which keywords you're ranked for, uh, you want to strategize if you have any ideas or thoughts or whatever, uh, I'd be happy to talk to anyone that is interested in uh, the subject of SEO. Nice, nice. Any last points or any last tips that you would like to share before we close out our show, Eric? Well, I'll circle back to what I said earlier. Uh, this is kind of like SEO is kind of like a marathon. So you have to stick with it. So if you don't have the patience or the time or the money to do search engine optimization, don't start that. Mm -hmm. Spend your money on ads, you know, social media ads or Google ads or what have you to get that more immediate uh, return. Yes. What happens in, in, in what I'm seeing is the Google ads prices are going up. They've been going up ridiculously the last two years here. Mm -hmm. And so as time goes on, it's going to become even more expensive as more people are, more companies are uh, trying to get that traffic from Google. Got it. And so budget it correctly 
And if you don't have the patience, and you, like I said, the patience, the time, or the money, um, don't start on this on this journey. Okay. Very good advice. Very good advice. Well, Eric Soropian, thank you so <laughs> much. He is the owner of This Is My South Bay Digital Marketing Agency. It has been a pleasure. Thank you so much for sharing those tips. I feel that we could go on and on and on. And you, and, and I, I'd love for you to teach a class. That might be something I'm, I might say, Eric, I have some people together. Let's let's do a Zoom webinar on this. Let's you know, do it. I, I think it would be great. Seriously. <laughs> let's so thank do it. you so much. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, podcast viewers and listeners. This is Kim Evans with Inspired Conversations. Thank you so much today, Eric. Thank you. All right. Bye for now.